guys welcome back my name is Sofia today I'm bringing you my first ever review yeah as always new background I'm still trying different things and I think this one's my favorite one it's just it shows my room so <laughs> book that we are gonna be talking about today is City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. This review is a part of the readathon that we are doing in this channel in 2019. It's called The Shadowhunters Read Along, and I have a whole video on it. But basically, we are reading every single book on the Shadowhunter Chronicles throughout the whole year. So if you want to join, I will link everything down below. Yeah, let's just begin. First, I'm going to do a non spoiler review. So if you haven't read the book, you're still good to go. But then I will get into the spoilers, but I will. I will tell you, don't worry, you're not gonna get spoiled. Also, I have to say, I have a review greeting on my computer, on my screen computer, so if I'm looking here, it's because I'm reading something. I don't wanna forget anything, because I'm really excited about this. For the non-spoiler review, in this book, we follow our main character, 15-year-old Clarice Afray. 15 years old was really young to me, but Okay, continue. So one day, Clary is like partying and clubbing with her best friend Simon, and she sees a bunch of kids or teenagers dressed in black, like kind of emo kids, killing what she's told to be a demon. Everything becomes greater when Simon, her best friend, cannot see these people, these teenagers. The next day, Clary's mother disappears mysteriously, and Clary finds herself involved in this different world she never thought existed, and she has to discover the truth about her mother and herself, and we just follow Clary in this like new journey. I will say this book amazed me. The whole point in this is that I already read these when I was younger, and it's my first time reading. It was super enjoyable. I thought it was going to be more boring. It was super good. I was really surprised. I remember being way worse than it was. I don't know if it's because it brings me nostalgic feelings. Of course, there was some cheesy parts, some cringe-worthy moments, but overall it was good. The thing that I was most worried about it was the writing in Cassandra Clare in other books tends to get really into describing and stuff and the writing can get really overwhelming, really tough to read. It gets boring to read, but in this book, it was pretty good. I think that problem comes later on this series. I gave it a four stars. I changed my opinion a bit because it was three stars before, but I will say I give it I gave it a four stars because of the nostalgic feeling, but it's more like a three and a half book. Be careful with Jace. He surprised me a lot in this book and please love Magnus because Magnus is one of my favorite characters in this whole series. But that's gonna be it for the non-spoiler review. If you don't want to get a spoil, please leave right now. You have to leave in one two, three. I'm gonna start with the spoiler, so go, go. Last chance. For the spoiler review, I'm gonna talk about the world building, I'm gonna talk about the characters, the relationship between them, and then my favorite parts. So for the world building, I have to say I cannot be truthful enough in this category, basically because I have read the book before and I knew how the world worked, like I knew what a shadow hunter was, I knew what a steel was. It just wasn't a surprise for me. For what I could tell, it didn't get too overwhelming. It's a world that is really complicated. It has a lot of like information and history behind it. But it was really well done in the first in the first chapters. How Clary, as a character, is a person that asks a lot of questions, and Jace is a character that cannot shut his mouth. The first parts of this book, we can see how Clary asks questions, and Jace response. It gives you enough information to understand what is happening, but it still leaves some like turns and history behind, so you're still intrigued. Another thing that I did with the book, when a term or the name of a demon showed up, I will grab my Shadowhunter codec. I will search, for example, in here, I wrote a note, it says, this is the first demon we get described in the mortal instruments, is the one that attacks Clary in her house after her mother disappears. And then I read this and it's truthful to the book. So I will say if you are getting lost with the terms, grab the Shadowhunter Codex if you have it. The other thing that I will say is don't read the little, so the Shadowhunter Codex has these little notes written and they are supposed to be notes 
written by the characters, either Clary, Jace, or Simon. I will say don't read those, because <laughs> those are spoilery for other books on the series. The plot was really intricate. The book is written in a way that doesn't lead you to believe that the end is gonna be boring. No one saw that plot twist coming. Even though I have read this book before, when I read that scene, I was like, <gasps> I was so surprised. I was like, I'm your brother, and I was like, <gasps> What? Now I'm gonna jump into the characters. The first one that I want to talk about is Clary. I'm gonna leave it there. Oh no, you cannot see it. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. So Clary, as I expected, she was a bit annoying, but she was surprisingly relatable. A lot of times in books when your main character is shoved into like a different world, they tend to they tend to adapt pretty quickly to this world and they are like killing a staff in the blink of an eye, which is not truthful. Clary was so well written, she was afraid of a staff she had to be afraid, like the Silent Brothers. When they were like fighting, she will trip over staff and fall to the ground. That would be me if I was in this situation, I would just like fall down running or something like that. The thing that annoyed me the most about Clary was how many questions she asks. She has so many questions. So for example, in page 60 of my books, she's talking with Izzy about Jace and she asks, why doesn't he live with his own parents? And Izzy responds, because they are dead. And then she keeps asking, did they die in an accident? And Isabel says, no. His mother died when he was born, his father was murdered when he was 10. And I will say, normally when someone tells you that someone's parents are dead, you would shut your mouth and say like, oh, okay, sorry for asking. But no, she keeps going and ask, oh, was it demons? Clary, come on! And I growed an note saying, Clary, my love, you're so annoying. Next character, I'm gonna talk about Jace. Although I thought Jace was going to be pretty annoying, he was really good in this book. His humor and sarcasm is really dry and it's just the kind of humor I like. He's really close to Simon type of sarcasm and humor, so I think they will be really good friends if it wasn't because they have to hate each other for the story purposes. The only thing I could see about Jace is that Cassandra Clare wrote his personality really like extreme. You can see a bipolar disorder in how he treats people throughout this book. We can get like a pretty dark and sarcastic Jace and then we can see a really lovely Jace in the whole like greenhouse scene. He has to be interesting. So a dark character it's pretty interesting to everyone. Next character, we're gonna talk about Simon. Simon, it's my second favorite character in this book. His comments and humor were so on point throughout the whole book. Every single scene that he is in is just so funny. Now the most problematic character in this whole book, and that's Alec. I had a massive problem with Alec. He's like nowhere to be seen in the whole book. I couldn't take his personality from the book because he isn't in like half of the book. <laughs> he wasn't there. But the main point here is Clary's assumption about how he is gay. In this scene, Clary asks Isabel if Alec is gay and it doesn't make any sense. I will say she's just taking a wild guess. So normally when you assume something, you are basing that assumption in something that has happened before you ask the question. The only thing that could lead us to think that Alec is gay is how Magnus and him interact in the, in the party. But that's after the question. So I was like, I'm getting really into it, but that was like, why, why? nothing has happened. This being said, I'm okay with Alec being gay. I'm not saying that he he shouldn't be gay. <laughs> I'm just saying that it was really weird how Cassandra Clare introduced us his orientation here. So, and the next and the last character that I'm gonna be talking about is Isabel. She is my favorite character in this whole book and series. She is amazing. She's the prototype of a well written a strong female character. Normally in other books, when you try to write a female strong character, there are traits that the author tends to erase from the personality of the character. And normally these traits are portrayed as feminine traits. Erasing those type of traits from the personality will create a more 
macho female or boy is boy, which is not the problem if you want to write these type of characters. But authors tend to do this without noticing that they are doing it. A good example of this will be sentences like don't cry like a girl or don't fight like a girl. And when these sentences are said by female characters, it's like you're a girl, of course you're gonna fight like a girl, but you can fight better than a boy. So this leads us to believe that you want to write a female a strong characters, there are girly things that they cannot do if they want to be a strong, which is a no no for me, no no. But this is something that does not happen with Izzy. She loves dressing up, she loves makeup, but she also loves fighting. And she has been trained her whole life with two other boys. And those boys, despite her being girly and liking these girly stuff, again, they are not girly stuff, but we are gonna call them these just because of the purpose of this explanation, boys still see her as a strong character, they respect her and think that she is one of the best. And I love that, I love that, I love Jason Alec. Uh, but yeah, she's awesome and I can't wait to see her development throughout this series. The last point that I'm gonna talk about, it's relationships. Uh, Jason Clary relationship was really surprising to me. There wasn't any chemistry between them. Nothing has happened to me to believe that they want to be together. That part of the book, the greenhouse, is the cheesiest part in the whole book and I love it. <laughs> I was laughing so hard. Clary and Simon, this pissed me off because they treated each other like trash. Clary just asks Simon to help her but then doesn't involve him in anything that is happening to her life and then Simon treats her so badly with EC. But there's this scene that I want to talk about. It's on page 320. It's the only part in this book that I cried with. I'm a really easy crier, so it doesn't have to be really sad for me to cry. It's the part where Simon is telling Clary that he loves her. Jay's Clary and Simon relationship is like, it's so funny. In future, Clarissa, it might be wise to mention that you already have a man in your bed to avoid such tedious situations. And Simon is like, you invited him into bed? And Jay's is like, ridiculous, isn't it? We would have never fit. <laughs> But then it's really, really sad when they're talking and Simon's like, because I've been in love with you for 10 years, so I thought it seemed like time to find out whether you felt the same about me, which I guess you don't. I was crying at the part. And then Simon says, you really want to know what else it was my mom said about you? She said, you will break my heart. That was so sad and I wrote a note and all I said oh my god I didn't remember this being so heartbreaking that was so heartbreaking and the last relationship that I want to talk about I've been talking for 30 minutes whoa <laughs> it's Clary and Issy um it was so cute because going back to the strong female character um another trait that this character will have is that they hate other women that are introduced in their close environment. Of course, easy is a word that Clary is like a new girl, she has never been around a girl and she has never had a girlfriend. Of course she's a word and she's a little bit like, okay, okay, don't get really involved. Then they're really cute because they want to be friends with one each other in page 477. And I guess I resented you at first, but I realize now that was stupid. Just because I would never had a friend who has a girl doesn't mean I could learn how to have one. And Clary says, me too. I just love that part. <laughs> and now let's talk about my favorite scenes. My favorite part of the whole book is the Magnus Bane party and Simon being a rat. That was amazing. I didn't remember that Simon became a rat in this book and <laughs> it was just so good. I haven't talked about Magnus a lot because his presence in this book is also non-existent. OMG, I love him. I love him so much. When he's flirting with Alec or me when they are leaving the party, Oh my god. Also, Rafael Santiago speaking in Spanish was really good because in the Spanish book that was lost. So it was really fun to he to see Rafael like cursing in the Spanish. I was like, Chico. The last thing I want to say is I loved how dramatic they were at the end of the book with the whole Valentine thing. They were like, oh, 
you cannot be my girlfriend because you are my sister but I really want you they were like really dramatic and it was just really fun um, but overall that's my opinion I give it a four stars I cannot say anything more did you enjoy it if you did tell me in the comments please comment your favorite scene or your favorite quote in the whole book uh, there's so many good parts so be wise what you choose i'm also going to open a discussion on the goodreads group if you want to write anything more and i also want to start uh easy as a strong female character post so i will also do that i hope you like this first review my very first review on the youtube channel if you want me to include anything on the review also tell me in the comments tell me everything in the comments i'm so excited to pick city of fascists next month i'm just so happy to have done this read along and i hope you do too but that's all for today's guys i love you see you on the next one bye